Right, I'd like to show what I've been working on for quite a while. I'm going to uh, give a quick demonstration of what it does. It looks very much like a water battery, doesn't it? Well, it's not. I am using water. What I started out with has really, really morphed into something else, as these things so often do. But it's a much, much better something else. There is water in here. The water is not an electrolyte in this case. If you'll notice that what I've got connected to, there is no positive and there is no negative. There's no cathode and there's no anode. I have my lead simply connected to a piece of plastic which I have developed with a material over it that acts. It is generating electricity just on its own. This is exactly what it looks like. The material, the substance which I have on it is just on one side. It's on this side, not on that side. You can't really see that, but it's just on one side. This particular piece is about, um, oh, two inches by probably around four inches. And that's what these other ones are in here also. They're all hooked in series. And they're generating 364 millivolts, 0.364 volts. Pretty, pretty solid too. So I'm going to come back over here and show a little close-up of this. I'm going to take it up here so you can see it's very, very, very thin. There's nothing else in it. And the leads are connected. There is no anode. There is no cathode. I simply have a lead going from my uh, meter, multimeter. to one side of it, a lead coming off in a series progression going through three of them to give me a total of right now I'm up to well, 0 0.367, 0 0.368, 0 0.369. So this is a device which is generating electricity in a water bath. Again, the water is not acting as an electrolyzer. The only problem with using water like in the water batteries is that the substances inside, if it's uh, copper as the uh, cathode and say zinc or anything else as the anode, it rusts and it um, degenerates the material. I've had this running for about five weeks now. There's been absolutely no degeneration at all in the substance because there is no cathode, there is no anode. And you would think it would just be shorting out. As you can see, it's just connected with no special place. I could connect those anywhere on there and it's generating electricity. I'm up to 383, 384. We'll have to see how high it will rise up. But there it is. It's really interesting. There's a close-up look view of the... You see there's nothing connected to it. There is no cathode. There is no anode. The water is not a... Uh, the water is basically acting like a catalyst. It has to be in the water to work, but the uh, water is not an electrolyte. There is no um, movement of ions moving from an anode to a cathode, because there is no anode or cathode. So there we are. Hope you find it interesting. I broke this down from a larger component just to show these individual components to you. I can hook these up in series and because they're so very, very thin, I could put a huge number in a very, very, very small space. No cathode, no anode. There's nothing that's going to be causing any kind of material degradation at all. And of course, we're not concerned about current. We're concerned, about, or excuse me, we're not concerned about voltage. We're concerned about current. So I can try to compute all this, which I can do, but I'm just going to go ahead and continue building it, put together a fairly good sized piece, and see what I can get it to do. Again, I want to emphasize no cathode, no anode. Nothing's going to rust. Nothing's going to degenerate. It will simply produce electricity. The only thing I have to do is add good old inert water. That's what I've been working on. 
and uh, there we go. Thank you much. Bye.